Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Standing behind me, sitting behind me, squatting behind me, is my Audi A4. It's now got Raceland coilovers on, which you're about to watch in this video. People always say that the Audi suspension is a is a, an absolute pain in the ass because it's got like spaghetti arms everywhere. It's not like normal suspension. Pros and cons of it, obviously it's gonna ride better, but it's harder to work on. But if I can do it, guys, by myself in lockdown with no power tools, anyone can do it. I kept surprising the car on this install, except near the end, where I was on the last corner, which was the back left, and it was sitting higher than the other side, so I tried to adjust it, and it took like half an hour underneath the car trying to adjust it, and I ended up raising it even higher. So then I had to spend another 45 minutes to get it back down lower. Anyway, let's get on with the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Please leave a like if you're excited to watch this video. Uh, follow me on Instagram, subscribe if you're new around here, and there's lots more Audi videos to come, so enjoy. I'm never really very good with installation instructions or tutorials or anything like that. I more just post the videos because it's a laugh and it's interesting to watch, isn't it? Raceland have their own coilover installation instructions, which I'll link in the description. Go watch that first to get an idea of what you've got to do. Come back here and we'll go on this together. I have just found this video off the off chance you're looking at installing some coilovers. I'm gonna be doing this installation on my own and without any power tools. Just a Halfords tool set and a slight help of quick fit. Okay, I know, I know, I know, right, let me just explain it. So I'm at the point where I've got the two front struts out. The suspension set up on an Audi, it's like looking at noodles. It's not just one strut which goes into the hub. All of that, no problem, easy peasy, done it on my own, on the floor, no worries whatsoever until it came to the bloody top mount bolt on the actual strut, which looks like this, yeah? I'm in the process of compressing the spring to get the top mount nut off. That's the nut. That's, this is the whole top mount. It's absolutely massive. And that one nut in there is the source of all my problems. You even need a swan neck, 18 millimeter swan neck spanner and the Allen key, but problem is you can't get enough grip and the piston spins inside when you try and undo it and that's the whole point of having an allen key. I try to keep power tools away from this video because I can't I can't afford them you know a lot of people don't have power tools to hand. Get yourself down to quick fit ask very politely they should be able to zap it off with one of their power tools. That's that's where I'm at okay we've got just got to undo this because we need the top mount. So this is the wonderful Audi suspension is fairly simple but there's multiple uh, different ways of getting about it and the biggest issue that people have is trying to get this stretch bolt out nine times out of ten they are going to be seized up and it's not going to come out but Raceland's guide tells you completely ignore that drop link Then the bottom of the hub itself, the strut itself. And then these two, turkey bones. Jump on the caliper a little bit and it should give you enough wheel room to get it out. One done. This is what it's going to look like when it comes out of the box. What you need to do, take the nut off the top, take the spacer off and keep that. Now you need to go to your old strut, get the bump stop and guard first. Oh, make sure you take out any uh, labels as well. That would help. And a little tip to make this install a lot easier, wind the coils all the way down so you've got as much room as possible up here and you can wind them up later. Then get the whole top mount and slide it on. Then the spacer and then the mount itself. This would be a great time to replace your bushings and your mounts and everything. You know what we're like, you know what I'm like. I don't have the money all the time for that. I need to get this car back on the road for work. And it kind of, kind of clips in and then the nut goes on top of that. And for some reason, installation to put it back on, the new nut is 19 millimeters and you need a five millimeter uh, Allen key. This is where if you had a ugga dugger, 
you could do a few ugger dugs to make sure that's all nice and tight, but I don't have an ugger dug machine, so I can't do that. Right, I've got to measure that, make sure that's the same size on the other side. I've ballsed up. This little black plastic thing is supposed to be the other way around. All right, they are ready to go and be put back in. They are the right way around this time. That's the bit I was on about. That black bit in here has to be sticking up so that the spring sits over the top of them. You see me take them out, you're gonna see me put them back in. So let's go and put them back in. It is getting so dark so early, but we've got one side in. Uh, now we just need to do the other side. First thing to do, from what I can remember from doing the first side, is to get these turkey bloody things strapped back on to the right place. I need one bolt now, please. Where did I put the top of bolts? Oh, it's it. Uh, we need to get the actual hub raised and in to the right spot. There we go, that sounded like it. Was that it? That's when you go to the top and see if you can see the three bolts gone through. Thank you Raceland for making these videos, it makes my life so much easier. Cool. So now it is the coilover fork mount. There we go. Then we're going to put the bolt through. The camera stopped, I don't know when it stopped, but it's in. And that took what? An hour? We're speed running this side, man. Now we just got to get the tyres on and we can put it back on the floor and see how low it is. I don't know, this, that's kind of... Um, I tried to get it somewhere in the middle, but by the way, guys, extra tip, if you're doing this, spray some um, copper grease so that it doesn't go rusty. I haven't got any at the moment, but I need a car to go to the shop to go and get some. slammed but that's at a nice height i'll see you guys tomorrow when we do the rears that is some big bolt wow look at that bolt biggest bolt i've ever seen Remove the strut. It's a bit faulty, I think. Which would probably explain why this side sat lower. We got it. We got the strut. Piston, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I was told that apparently the strut should shoot back out. I've just pushed it in and it should automatically spring back up. This one doesn't. So now in the guide, it's telling me to loosen the bolts slightly that hold the rear subframe on, just low enough so that we can get the spring out. Oh, so that, I think, I think these two. It's finally fucking loose. Both of them. Right, I was trying to jump the gun and trying to get the spring out just by doing them two bolts, but we need to take this bolt off as well. And hopefully once that's out, that'll then be enough wiggle room to get the spring out. So let's do that. For some reason, the microphone didn't record this bit of sound. I have absolutely no idea why it works perfectly fine later on, but here I'm just showing you that the spring is broken and it has snapped. So for the new one, all you need is the new mount, the new rubber bit on the top, 
for the spring and then that's fine for just the spring part the piston you need the top part again for the new piston shock you just undo it similar to last time but a lot easier you can just use any spanner you don't need a swan neck and um, a little clampy thing I can't even remember what it's called so that's that's the part that you need tear it apart pop the little dust cover bump stop back on first then you need that spacer that Raceland provide then you put on the top mount part then the bolt and or the nut and the nut screws on and does up exactly the same as the fronts with an allen key uh, right so to get this get the spring back in it's a lot easier than trying to get the spring out and if your spring wasn't broken and you're probably gonna have a tough time trying to get the spring out but my battery died so I couldn't show that but yeah all you need to do get the spring in um, do do all the bolts back up and that's it and then um, yeah guys enjoy the rest of the video Ugh. oh guys guys if you're gonna do this job I highly recommend the monster. It's going to drain you and you need to keep yourself energied up. I'm now jumping on to the other side where we left off because you don't want to see double of the same thing all the time. So the other side's done. We're now doing the passenger side rear and I've got the spring in and all we now got to do is put the strut in. This is the... I can't speak anymore. This is the home straight is what I was going to say. We're going to get this in and we're going to do this bolt up and we're going to be loving life. Well, actually, no, we're not. First, what we need to do is do the um, soft frame bolts back up and then this top arm back up. Also, having a little shit jack is perfect for this job. If you've got an old jack, keep it. Don't throw it because you're going to constantly have to jack up the hub on all four corners. We lost an insane amount of light because I had to go pick up Lucy from work in her car, not in this car. Oh, fucking finally. Trying to align that bloody bolt. Just the two bolts, I think they're 13 mil. Cool, now you got to get this little spacer that they provide with the shock and put it in between the shock and the mount so that it just kind of cushions it a little bit. You're not going to believe this. When I went out, I put the camera on charge. It was fully charged and all we had to do was put the shock on and, and we were done. But the card was full. Whenever it cut out, it just cut out and said it was full and I got the job done. I didn't know so it's a 64 gigabyte card That's how long it's taken me to do this, but it's full. I've now swapped the card over for another one So we're done. I don't know how much you saw All I've now got to do. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm just gonna brush all the dust off um, I'm gonna clean up the wheel well because that is covered in like caked in dust and dirt So I'm gonna brush all that down put my hat back on so that I look fresh as fresh as I can do with this haircut and then uh, we'll drop the car so I'm gonna go do all that get the fender back on and yeah put the wheel back on and then I'll see you guys when we're dropping the car sweet sounds like a plan I'll update you guys quickly with the uh, man cave it's still looking a bit messy because I've obviously done all the install like the old suspensions there I don't know if I actually said or not but the reason the car looked low on the driver's side rear was because the spring had snapped, the piston had like collapsed. So it was already sitting lower than what it should have been. We're halfway there with the dartboard. If you're following me on Instagram, uh, you'll be keeping up with what we're doing. It's just, whenever I get the time to do this stuff is when me and Lucy both work on it. Lucy's standing behind the camera at the moment. Dartboard with only two darts because this is an old dart board. But we ordered the panels. Uh, we've got doors to cover it, which we need to finish painting. Got some shelves, which need to, well, I need to paint. And then these need to go up. This big one's gonna go along here. And then the little one, I think, is gonna go somewhere over there just to be handy. 
That bulb needs a new starter, which I've ordered. You've probably seen it in the, in the videos. These lights were hanging up here and they're only screwed in with one just in case I need them like I did for this video. But that lights up the room more. And, and the whiteboard that I found uh, with a list of stuff that needs to get done, I can finally tick this one. Coilovers done on the Audi. I think I, I did film all of this before, but I'm not sure if I put it in the video. I think I just cut it because I had nothing else to put it with. And I'm showing you it now. It's looking okay. It's more homely. No spiders anymore. All the spiders are gone. And yeah, now I need to quickly go for a test drive to make sure that the car is actually all right. So let's go do that real quick. Test drive time. Now I know for a fact that my alignment, I think it's gonna be absolutely mullered. But if it can get me around the block, I'm hoping there's no clunks. I really hope that everything's done up properly. But it's absolutely raining, absolutely pissing it down. So this is a great day for it. Oh, scraped already coming out of my drive. All right, first impressions doesn't actually seem to be pulling to one side. Oh, just gets over the bumps. You guys remember the bumps on my road, right? Scrapes going over the bumps a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Golf was. I think I can live with that. No noises coming from left and right. This is a good start. I think the uh, front tires are both pointing inwards or both pointing outwards. When you look at it from dead straight, it looks like when one wheel's straight, the other wheel's pointing out slightly. Even, even going over rough bit. The, you know, the ride, I haven't even mentioned that, the ride quality. It feels amazing. I'm not even joking. Here we go, bumpy bit, big bump. Hardly anything. And this is a low car compared to what it was. This feels like the exact same suspension I had on it already which is a really good thing okay it scrapes on full lock on the wheel arches I'm actually really impressed if this can get me to work next week then I've got a week off and I'll get it aligned cool we've done a loop now we're going to go back down the bumpy road see how these bumps hold up here we go first bump going 15 miles an hour. Yeah, a little bit of a scrape. Oh, ho, ho, big scrape. <laughs> I've missed this. Yeah, man, I'm happy with this. Good ride height. I just need to let it settle because not all four corners are the same height. Thank you guys so much for watching. More content is on the way. I've got the new OBD11 to try out. They sent me the new one. So I'm gonna give that a go in the next video, see what is happening with this car. Yeah, thank you for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Big thanks to Raceline once again. Uh, the link is in the description. If you wanna go check out these coilovers for the Audi A4, I think they fit both the Avant and the Saloon. So if you're interested in that, definitely go check them out. Highly recommend them. So far from that little test drive, I recommend them, but I'll keep you guys updated in about a week's time as well. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.